Amen. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. We might be seated, please. I don't know. I was richly blessed. And there is so much revelation from the characteristics and qualities of a champion. Revelations I got today. And I hope you too were blessed. Amen? Uh, Right now, right now we want to go okay sorry praise the lord we are there's a uh we're going to go to our seminars if you look at the program there is a seminar life life matters seminar And I want you to be thinking about where you need to go, where you need to be, which seminar you you want to be. We have seminar one, which is what we are going to deal with today. And there are three of them that we are going to be taking in each of the Life Matters seminar. The first one is winning strategies in finances and businesses. These are people who are planning to establish a business and want to know how to run and how to begin uh, and then proceed and be successful in doing business. And uh, Life Matters, winning strategies in finances and businesses will be on this first section, the first rule here on this side of the auditorium. The second one, which is winning strategies in profession and career. You want to develop yourself either in your place of work and you want to be the best that you can. You are are thinking of getting back to school to develop yourself. Maybe as a CN you want to become a nurse. And there are some things that you need to be some, uh, will I say, a career acumen that you need to gather in order for you to be promoted to be the best champion you want to be, that you need to be in that seminar. Winning strategies in profession and career. Maybe you think you've been stagnated in, in your career. You can still do something about it. And that section, which is seminar, uh, which is the second part of the seminar, winning strategies in profession and career, will be on my left, okay, on that aisle. So then the third one, sorry, no, this winning strategy in profession and career will be at the tent outside, okay, will be at the tent outside. And then winning strategies in ministry, that's an, another area of development we want to be at will be on this side, okay? You're a pastor, you're uh, a worker that, and you believe you have a calling, and you want to develop what God is laying in your heart, and you just have questions, and you need more ideas in how to be the best for God, that you, the best you can be in your ministry. That is for you. Winning strategies in ministry. That will be on this left side. Praise the Lord. And please, each of our seminars is going to take 35 minutes. All right? So from the time we start, it will be 35 minutes. Before then, we are going to stand up, please, as we sing a a hymn before we go. Okay. Praise the Lord. All right, let's, uh, let's stand up as we begin to go to our seminar locations now. Remember, uh, winning strategies in finances and businesses. You need your businesses developed. You'll be on this side. Please, let's all stand and begin to go to where we want to go for our seminars. Winning strategies in profession and career will be out there at the tent. And then winning strategies in ministry will be on this side. Please, let's begin to move right now. 
and this will take 35 minutes. Our teachers in those various seminaries, please begin to stand. Go to your location. Winning strategies in finances and businesses on my right. Winning strategies in ministries on my left. Winning strategies in profession and career. The tent out there. Please, our, our teachers, I want to see the teachers right in front of the, uh, the classes they are going to hold. Little deeper, Jesus' love must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper, deeper yet, deeper yet, I will dig. Gale to deeper, Jesus' love must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper, deeper yet, deeper yet. I will dig a little deeper, Jesus' love must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper, deeper yet. Deeper yet, I will dig a little deeper. Jesus' love must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper, deeper yet, deeper yet. Please, the various uh, seminar leaders, Pastor Ahmed, please, could you come up here and have your seat? Pastor Yemi, look on it, please. Can you come up here? Pastor Victor, that told the career, please, can you come up here? Three I of our. Dig a little deeper. Jesus' love must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper. Deeper, deeper yet. Deeper, Jesus, Lord, must be sweeter. I will dig a little deeper. Deeper, deeper yeah. Deeper, yes. I will dig a little deeper. Please, where are the seminarians? The people that just taught us. Can you come up, please? Deeper, yes. Pastor, look on you. Where are you? Jesus, Lord, I will Deeper, yes. I will dig a little deeper. Jesus, Lord. Must be sweeter, I will dig a little deeper, deeper yet. Amen. I was looking for that voice that was helping me, and that voice was better than my voice. And I just have to ask, that I saw one of the choir masters. No wonder. Amen. I will dig a little deeper because there's something about the love of Jesus Christ. And because of him, I will serve him till I die in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much uh, for the amazing session of the seminars that we had, the three seminar section, And these are the three leaders. We are going to have, I know you have one or two questions that you have. And because we only have 10 more minutes, please, if the electronic can just time us for 10 minutes. And we want to make sure that we stick to time. 
uh, we, if you do have a question, if you do have a question, uh, the first of uh, these people that are here, um, winning strategies in finances and business, if you have a question, please can you raise up your hand if you were at the seminar there and you had a question. You have the question you want to ask. People that are attended winning strategies in finances and, and businesses, raise up your hand. You see, nobody's raised up their hand. But I tell you, when one or two hands goes up, multitude, okay, I see your, I saw your hand first, please. Can you stand? Just hold on. And I see another hand here. Okay, so the two of you are the people that, did, I don't, that's his hand, that's the second person. Yes, yeah, so these are the two people we are going, all right. Okay, I'm going to allow you, sir. So these are the three people for that seminar. Just hold on and mark yourself, okay? Now, the people for the other seminars, winning strategies in profession and career. Winning strategies in profession and career. The people that were at the tent, if you have a question in, and you attended that seminar, can I see your hand up, please? Oh, which one did you attend, sir? Oh, the one here. Okay, that's fine. I'm coming to you. The people that, okay, you did attend the one out on the tent. Okay, no, I'm talking about people at the tent. If, excuse me? Okay, thank you. All right, so winning strategies in profession and career. Anybody? No questions for the people out there? All right, you are taking number four, okay? My brother, thank you. All right, the third one. Winning strategies in ministry. If you have a question and you attended the seminar that was here, winning strategies in ministry, can you raise up your hand, please? Go in once. Okay, there's, thank you, my sister. Any other person in that winning strategies in ministry? Okay, all right, my sister. Is that you or for him or for her? Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, so we got our people right now. So we want to see the people that asked, that has a question on the business side, okay? Well, so what we're going to do because of our time, you're going to just ask your questions, and then we'll uh, summarize them for that section. All right. Sorry, please, where is the mic for my sister? I want you to give our sister Gertrude, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Yemi, for that wonderful session. Um, my question has to deal with in, if, as a business person, you intend to build a national brand, and um, how do you build a capacity, not just maybe servicing a few people, but how do you build a national brand that can deal with multiple um, clients, I guess, capacity. That's my question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Pastor Matthew, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's a month um, for nice seminar I, I attend, and then it has been helping me a lot, and there was a time I asked my arrow, how do you able to invest in the life of people, uh, which Pastor uh, Olukane couldn't mention, that when we are growing financially, we should learn how to sow into the life of others. When you look at other religions, you will see that they do a lot of... So I want, the question I want to ask is that, how is that one a uh, then how is it helping? Uh, how is it helping the entrepreneur to sow in the life of other people? How does giving and giving. investing and you. giving to people God help to uh, help you in your business? Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, sir, can, can, could we get the mic here? Okay, that's fine. Please, could you give her the question, uh, the mic to ask the question? Please go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Hola, este, él habló de que había que invertir 
de una forma este, con poco dinero primero. Me gustaría saber cuánto dinero es el que necesito para empezar a invertir. All right, so yeah, interpretation. Between the thing that was saying, he says that you start f f with little. Make um, little investment mm -hmm. and you start that way. Her, cr question, her question is the following. How we, we, we which amount of money can she count to start off? All right. Start off the, the in, this, investment. The business. Okay, so her question basically is how, how much... How small can you start a business with? Okay, what is the minimum amount that you can really use to start a business with? All right, so that's the third question on business. The final one on the on business side. My brother, please. Thank you, sir. I really enjoy the discussion, sir. I want to find out something generally. Maybe when you were working before and you now finally lost the job and the 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 cash the, the finances with the owing is very very little. How can how can you invest the the finance because when you are not even receiving any finance from I mean from anywhere for the moment. Alright, so if I understand your question correctly, uh you don't have a uh as no cash inflow, but with the little amount that you have, how was the best strategy to invest that which you have to, since you don't have a job that brings income? Is that correct? All right. So, um, so please, I'm going to give that to my pastor, Pastor Yemi, please. Uh, you handle that session. So you understand the four questions, right? Go ahead, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, the first question about uh, how to build a branch capacity uh, national that can have a national recognition. Uh, I hope, uh, Attorney Gatru, I hope I got your question correct. Um, so, the first thing I would say is that you need to look into your staffing capacity first. You need to look into your employees. The, the strength of every business is the people, the employees. So if you don't have the people that we can handle, because you are thinking of enlightenment, you are thinking of expansion, you are thinking of something big. So if you don't have the people that can handle it, uh, when it comes, it's going to be a problem. So you need to look into your staffing capacity, not only the number, the number, uh, how many people you need, then the categories of your staffs, uh, the kind of intelligence, kind of people, because at every stage of business, you need the people, the, the kind of different people with different level of uh, intelligence. If you start with people that, uh, maybe you start your business with people that are just high school, at a point when the business is growing, you will need, you will discover you need people that are uh, Technocrat, people that are intelligent, people that know what they are doing, unless the business is going to crumble. So you look into the capacity of your staffing first. So, and you want to see how you can employ people that can handle this if you expand. So, once you are able to do that, uh, even if you are not able to come up with the number that you need at the beginning, come up with the minimum that you can handle when the, uh, the when expansion comes. And sometimes maybe okay, you may need to have people designated to different locations outside, your, your, outside the main office. So once that is done, then the next thing to be able to reach, to be able to uh, uh, spread your brand is marketing. Marketing is very, very important uh, for every business. And in this country, you cannot do a very viable business without marketing. And this is called is strategic marketing, real marketing. So, and um, marketing, you can be uh, online, it can be TV, it can be different kinds of marketing. You have to come up with marketing strategies. And you may even need to consult marketing experts to be able to reach your goal. I think that answers your question. Uh, okay, the no second question. 
sowing into the life of others. I believe I did mention it in the in the, the seminar where I said uh, what are the tools we have for winning? And I said uh, impeccable understanding of uh, stewardship. I believe some people had that. So, it's part, as Christian, it's part of our understanding of stewardship that we know that when we are blessed, as God bless us, we need to help others. We need to give to others. We need to look out for others. And that is actually the way multiply us. So, once we have understanding that we are stewards of every resources that God has given to us. Once as a Christian we understand that, that shouldn't be a problem for us to help others, help people that are in need, not only uh, uh, people that are in the church. The Bible says that we should help uh, uh, everyone. Yeah. Beginning from where? Yes. From the household of faith. So, we should help people as much as possible. So, it's part of what we discuss. Let's quickly run scene. to the other two so okay. that we can summarize on that. Sorry. Uh, okay, capital for to start business, the minimum amount. Uh, I would say that depends on what kind of business you want to do. So if you know that you don't have much, maybe you have $500, you know, want to look for something small. You want to look for something like a kind of, a, that can give you a passive income. Maybe a kind of online business like investing. Uh, I think one of our sisters in one of our past uh, programs taught us about how we can invest in passive income. So you want to look for something small. So if you don't have a big amount of money, and the Bible says, who has despised what? The day of small beginning. So get started with something small. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Uh, also, uh, the last one, which is uh, invest little amount you have. I think I answered that, right? I think you, yes. you answered part of that. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to chip in something concerning the national branding, but because of our time, we can talk uh, more on that. But and, and with what my sister asked, depending on what, what you are trying to do, if you want to start a food hawking business, there is not the same, the minimum amount is not the same as if you want to start a car business. So depending, the good thing our, our pastor said is, Whatever you have, invest it. Start something, and by God's grace, with God in it, it will begin to multiply. Amen? Let's, the, I think we had another question concerning ministry. Someone raised up the hand. Yes, my sister, please. Can someone give my sister a mic for ministry? I did not believe we had question on profession and career, but we did have question on ministry. Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you turn her mic on, please? Uh, how do you know if God is calling you into a certain ministry, the difference between um, God calling you and just straight passion from your own heart? Very good question. Thank you very much. And I think that's the only one we have in ministry, right? Yes. Pastor, over to you, sir. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, can I return the question to you, my sister? How do you know you are saved? Okay. Can we give her the mic quickly? How do you know you are born again? Um because I have dedicated my life to Christ and by the way that I live and how I, everything that I do revolves around Christ. No? Praise God. The same way. That's how to know whether you are called. You are basing your salvation not on your feeling, but you are basing it upon the word of God. The Bible says many that received him, to them he gave what? Power. To be sons and daughters of God. And you believe that word. The Bible says if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you all your sins and to cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. 
And you believe that, right? And you are saved the same way. He said, go into the world and pray the gospel. Where you go, you obey that same scripture, and as you are doing that, that is a call already. And as you start with that calling, God will begin to promote you. You understand what I mean? Like, like most of us who are preacher now, we didn't start as a preacher. Uh, we gave our life to Christ, and we start from wanting to do this, clean the, uh, you know, sweep the church, uh, do this, and from there, and then we are obeying, obeying the scripture. Go and evangelize, we evangelize. Go and share trust, we share trust. Witness to your neighbor, we witness. You know, share with people, you know, around you. Which, and that is calling. And as you are growing in obedience, in faithfulness to that little thing, God will begin to magnify your ministry. I don't know if that's settled your question. Thank you very much, sir. Um, amen? We are called to be champions. There are some callings that God, Jesus, has already defined for us. Go and preach the gospel. You don't need your pastor to tell you that's a ministry. Amen? And so that is it. Thank you very much, Pastor. I do have a question for uh, our youngest man here and uh, youngest pastor, but there's someone that wants to ask a question on profession and career first. But my question will have been, a, a daughter wants to do uh, sociology, physical uh, sports, and the father said, do and do medicine. And the battle is going. What sh who should we listen to? If your daughter obeys, will you say the father is disobeying the father? If the father enforces, and the, fa the, the daughter, just because the father said, was forced to do what she doesn't like, what should, what should happen? Go ahead with your question, my brother. Um, I was actually in the tent, and my question is somehow related to what you just said. Um, Talking about mentorship and uh, career development, you have a mentor who is in a different profession and you study something different. How would you go about that? Okay. Pastor, sir. Okay, praise the Lord. Uh, the first question is a very tough question, <laughs> but it's very common uh, among us because um, a lot of youths have a desire to study something, um, but their parents want them to study something else. But like I mentioned uh, when we were doing the seminar, I think um, both parents and children and youths, let's ask God first. Um, let's not go by what we see physically. I'm saying that because I've experienced that before. If you go by what you see physically, you might fail. You think, oh, this place is very lucrative. It might not be lucrative tomorrow. So God that knows today and tomorrow, he should be the one to lead us. So my advice to, number one, the parents and to the youth, go and ask God, what do you want me to do first? If God is in it, irrespective of who you are, you are going to succeed. If God is in it, if he's sports, I mean, Toby Amazon, we all heard of Toby Amazon. Do you know Toby Amazon? <laughs> okay. Amazon, I'm sorry. I said Amazon, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was the nickname that was given to her, Amazon, because she just broke the, work red, the world record, right? in 100 meters, what, orders. Now she made $100,000 in 12 seconds. You see, which profession will give it that in 12 seconds? She made, <laughs> she made $100,000 yeah, 100, in what? In 12.12 12 seconds. Now, but you are sure it didn't start that day, right? It's a lot of discipline and hard work. But the parents supported that. That's where I'm going. The parents did not say, yeah, I want you to be a doctor. You will never make money. No, 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 no. You must do this. The parents say, is this what God is telling you to do? You are sure this is what God wants you to do? Go ahead and do it. Today, the whole world knows that name. I mean, not just our uh, The whole world. If you mention the name anywhere in the world, she's a world record what? Older. And tomorrow, that's 100000 they gave her. That's not what they paid her. That one is for her for breaking the record. That is just for breaking the record. So that's why I'm saying that. It's not about whether do this, be a doctor, be a dad. It's God in it. Parents, that's the assignment for us. And I tell the youths, that's the assignment. Now, number two, for the youths, 
I know they are so curious. They, some of them are trying to choose these studies because they are running from work. <laughs> That's the truth. They don't want to, they just want something easy. But what I tell them is that if you are very sure this is what you want to do, can you debate it with your parents? Like, have your points. Your father say you want to be a doctor. You say you want to be a, I don't know, an artist. Bring out your point. What, do you, what are you going to achieve if you go and study this? What is your future like? Have you made your research? In the, five, in the next five years, what are you going to be? In the next 10 years, what are you going to be? What are your points? Do you have a plan? We talked about a professional development plan. Do you have a plan? Now, you bring your plan. The parents bring the plan. We compare it. Which one is better? You understand what I mean? And the parents, when we are talking to our children too, let's not enforce them. Our, our children need understanding. So what we do is, come, this is where you are going to be. If you read this course, this is where you are going to be in the next 10 years. If you read medicine, this is where you are going to be in the next 10 years. Let's compare. Which one do you want to go? You understand what I mean? And even the course you want, the best way to teach for a child to know what he wants to be is to show them. Some of you want your parents, your children to be doctors they've never seen a doctor before. You want your parents to be nurses they've never seen it before. You want them to be pilots they've never seen it before. So the best thing is take them to the environment. Take them to the prison, right? And say, look at these people here, they did this and this and this. Take them to the hospital, look at the people here, they did this and this. Take them to the help, uh, uh, airport. You want to be a pilot, see what they do. You don't need to force them to read. Naturally, when they see what their people are doing, they will get the challenge and move. Now, to your question quickly, I will not advise you in your profession to find a mentor outside your profession. You know, we have different kind of mentors. We have spiritual mentors. We have mentors for a particular part of your life. For your career and profession, I will advise you to choose a mentor in your profession. That is the only way you can gauge your goal and evaluate yourself. So if you are, if you are a medical doctor, find a mentor in medicine. So they will give you a guide. You say that is where I'm going and you can see it clearly. All right. Thank you. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and may God help a lot of us African parents that our children will bring and say, I want to be a professional gamer. And they will show you a, uh, a sports illustration, how a professional gamer became, makes a million a month. May God help us in Jesus' name. But thank you very much, sirs. We are really grateful for, uh, for the teaching and for the questions. Amen.